we're given the choice to click on an article. Which would you choose? Taliban attack on Pakistani military base kills at least 17. Or 23 signs you're an awkward individual. By a show of hands, who would pick the first one? Who would pick the second one? Keep your choices in mind. I was scrolling through Facebook the other day when I came across an article. It was about the impact of unsafe abortion. I scrolled past it only to stumble upon yet another article about a beloved lion who was shot in Tanzania. Now, I didn't click on these two articles. Instead, I exited out of Facebook, closed my laptop screen, and continued my day. If you asked me why I didn't read those articles, I would have told you lies. I would have told you that I was too busy trying to finish my homework. I would have told you that I was in a rush to get to school. But in reality, I was doing what hundreds and thousands of people do every single day. I was simply ignoring the problem. I was pretending it doesn't exist. After all, this doesn't affect me. Yes, it affects 500,000 Syrian refugees, but not me. This idea is called willful ignorance. There are two key players who take advantage of this. First, the media. They most definitely know this. They know that you're not going to care about a girl who was kidnapped in a country so far away you don't know how to pronounce its name. For example, who knew that there were a string of bombings in my home country, Myanmar, about two years ago? Anyone? While everyone else in the world were leading normal lives, completely unaware of the bomb threats, I was at home. I made sure I never left the house. I made sure that if I did, I would never be gone for more than an hour. Unfortunately, the deaths and injuries of 13 Burmese citizens never made it onto the popular global news. But that makes sense. It's in a country 5,000 kilometers away. Evidently, not a lot of people are going to care. The Guardian published a list of its most popular articles from 2013. The list starts with Edward Snowden, the whistleblower behind NSA surveillance revelation. Then, the world was curious to know about a certain letter to Miley Cyrus. Then after that, ranked number 16, we arrive at an article about the Boston bombing. After NSA gossip and after entertainment, are we finally getting to the event that shook almost all of the United States. Next key player, marketing teams. I'm going to start with Apple. Who here has already bought or plans to buy the newest iPhone 6S? Earlier on the year, I watched a documentary on the lives of Apple's Foxconn factory workers. Now Foxconn, produces more than just Apple products. It produces Kindles, Playstations, Xbox Ones. The short clip I'm about to show you right now is from a YouTube documentary titled Who Pays the Price? In the video, they highlight the health aspects that arrive due to the lack of corporate responsibility. My son's name is Ming Quin Pong. 
He just turned 26 years old. This should be the best time of his life. But unfortunately, he was diagnosed with leukemia in May 2009. After three examinations over 12 months, it was confirmed to be occupational leukemia, an aggressive form of cancer caused by benzene. plans to buy the newest iPhone 6S. The video has a lot of emotional impact on people. The thought that we support a company whose greed takes over human lives is nerve-wracking. The thought that so many people risked their lives so I could have a small device sounds unreal. But this isn't enough to make us throw away our iPhones and our MacBooks. It's still not enough to get us to boycott them or protest. Because the truth is, we'll still buy from them. The Golden Arches, McDonald's. Documentaries like Supersize Me highlight the health aspects of eating McDonald's. But what about ethical issues? McDonald's is most infamously known for its farm animal treatments. It's known for stuffing multiple chickens into one cage, burning their beaks off, and forcing them to live among other chicken corpses. But this isn't the reason most of us stopped eating McDonald's. Most of us stopped because of the health problems that could potentially affect us. Not so much because of animal rights. It seems almost bizarre that we continue to support these companies despite the fact that it's against our morals. It's against everything we've been taught and yet we almost never feel remorse. So why not? because it's human nature. More specifically, there are three things we love. Comfort, security, and being happy. We avoid things that don't light up the pleasure centers of our brain. We avoid things that can make us feel guilty, powerless, shameful. We would much rather see that photo of a puppy riding a bike or of a kitten dancing we would much rather have that rush of serotonin, that rush of dopamine. We've become so comfortable shutting out all negative associations we have with companies. And we continue to believe that our actions don't matter, so why bother? And this is when I tell you that they do. In 2010, Johnson & Johnson reformulated all of its baby products, every single one of them, in response to a boycott call, which claimed they had been using harmful chemicals in their baby shampoos. In 2012, Greenpeace promised a zero deforestation policy after giving in pressure from Greenpeace. Nestle now has a zero deforestation policy after 200,000 emails were sent and activists showed demonstration. And most recently, on June 26, the millions of people who fought for marriage equality in the United States won their battle. I agree. It's so much more cheaper to buy a 100 yen cookie than to buy a 500 yen fair trade organic one. It's also more socially acceptable to own an iPhone than a phone from a company no one has heard of. But evidently, ignoring these issues 
doesn't mean it doesn't exist. We continue to support these huge companies believing we don't have a choice. We continue to ignore articles that could make us upset. And just like your annoying little brother, we pretend they don't exist. Why? Because it's just easier. It's easier to turn your back on things that can make you feel remorse. And again, it goes against everything we want out of life, which is happiness. But get this, there are 600 million people in the world with at least one Apple product. The number of suicides at Foxconn's factory is 14. It's also barely visible on this graph. You would think that a huge number, like 600 million, could affect a small number, like 14. You would think that 600 million people would choose a slightly different route to save 14 very important lives. But maybe we can start now. We can support businesses we know do their part in social responsibility. We can surround ourselves with the news we would normally avoid and the sad realities we would normally justify. We can start to care. Are you ready to complicate your lives to simplify someone else's? Are you ready to give up on the idea that ignorance is bliss? Are you ready to fight on a battlefield of social justice? <laughs>